Hello everyone, nice to have you back. Today I want to tell you the story of an Ilford HP 3 roll film, a black and white film that was produced until 1969. I bought 10 of these films on eBay. They were all still in their original packaging, so they looked like new. I have already given away 4 of these films to 2 photo friends. I will show you how to load the film into a Pentax 645N. The procedure is identical for the predecessor, the Pentax 645, and the successor, the Pentax 645N2. Then I'll take you to a deserted place where I expose this film. Back again, I'll show you in detail how to develop a black and white film at home. And finally we can admire together the results of a film that has been superimposed for 54 years. Enjoy this little time travel. Ilford was founded in 1879 by Alfred Harmon. Since then, the name has been synonymous with excellent products, especially in the field of analog black and white photography, although Ilford also gained an excellent reputation in color photography with its Cibachrome and Ilfochrome products. Ilford HP3 film was introduced in 1941 with a speed of ISO 125, which was increased to ISO 400 in 1960. This film was discontinued in 1969. Ilford continued to develop its film emulsions and offered a wide range of black and white films over the years. Some are still available today. For more information about Ilford's world of products, visit the official website at ilfordphoto.com. It's well worth a visit. Of course I also recommend my homepage aperture1.4.com. You can see the steps to insert the film here in the video, it's really very easy. First, change the empty film spool from the spool holder with the S mark to the other spool holder without the mark. Then remove the film tape, so that you can insert the protective paper of the film into the slot of the spool. Make sure the black side of the protective paper is facing you. This is the only way to ensure that the actual film is facing the lens correctly for exposure. If you see any color of protective paper other than black, the film will not be exposed. Sometimes the films are really stubborn and don't want to run the way I want them to. Then rotate the gear so that the start mark on the film is aligned with the S mark on the film spool holder. Now the film holder is inserted into the camera and then locked. There is one small thing to keep in mind. For the common 120 roll film you need a 120 roll film holder. 
For the rare 220 roll film you need a 220 roll film holder. What better subject could there be than an abandoned old place, to expose a film that already passed its expiration date 54 years ago? I would not know. So I took a trip to one of these places with my photography buddy. Back at home, I was very curious to see if this old Ilford HP3 would still produce usable results. Superimposed films should not be exposed at their rated speed. An old rule of thumb is that one stop more should be exposed per decade. This would be about five stops more, since the film was passed its cell by date over 50 years ago. Based on ISO 400, that would be 200, 100, 50, 25, 12, 12 ISO. This seemed like too much of a good thing. I decided to use ISO 50, expose the shadows consistently, as is always recommended for black and white or color negative photography, and work with exposure compensation depending on the subject. Of course, to be able to examine the negatives, the film had to be bathed first. And that's how black and white negative development works. To develop black and white film, you will need the following lab equipment. A dark bag, also called a change bag. The film must be wound into the spiral of the developing tank in complete darkness. Alternatively, a room can be completely darkened. A developing tank with a spiral for winding the film. The spiral must be suitable for the wide 120 roll film, compared to 35 mm film. I have been using the Jobo Uni Tank 1520 shown here for about 35 years. Three 1 liter plastic bottles to store the chemicals. Since film developer is sensitive to air, I use a collapsible bottle for the developer so that the air can be squeezed out of the bottle as much as possible. This is not necessary for the other two chemicals needed, the stop bath and the fixer. A measuring cup for amounts up to 25 or 50 milliliters. A graduated beaker for amounts up to 1 liter. A laboratory thermometer. Film clamps to hang the film to dry one pair per film film developer to make the captured image visible stop bath to stop the developing process immediately fixing bath for film development to make the developed film insensitive to light wetting agent to prevent dry spots and if necessary to prevent static electricity fungal and bacterial attack I have deliberately kept the explanations of the individual materials required simple, so that it is easy to understand even for a first-time developer. And after your first success, you may be interested in delving deeper into the subject of film development. To load the film in the dark bag into the can, you must place the film in all parts of the film processing can in the change bag. The dark bag is then carefully closed. It has two openings on the opposite side, each with a long cuff for the arms. Make sure that the cuffs fit snugly on the arm and are pulled up as far as possible. This prevents light from penetrating. First, the spiral must be adjusted from the size of a 35mm film to the size of a roll film. Please take a look at the necessary steps. In this part of the video you can see very clearly how a 120 roll film is fed into the film spool and transported further. Attention! You should only do this in complete darkness, for example in a changing bag.
when the film has been wound to the end, simply peel off the tape holding the film to the spool and wind the film the last few inches as usual. Now you have to assemble the film developing box so that the film can be processed in the light. Perfectly protected from light, the can is now ready to be removed from the changing bag. All further processing of the film takes place in bright daylight. The developer is the first to be prepared. For this old HP3, I found very little information about type appropriate development. Kodak D76 should be suitable at 20 degrees Celsius, undiluted, with a development time of 12 minutes. The developer is prepared according to Kodak's instructions. This is easy to do, just follow the developer instructions. Kodak sold its photochemical division to a Chinese investor called Sinopromise in the fall of 2020. Kodak Photochemistry is now owned by Sinopromise High Tech Holdings Limited. Kodak D76 seems to be discontinued. An alternative is Adox D76 Film Developer. As the film is to be developed at 20 degrees Celsius, the developer is cooled down to the desired temperature in a cool water jacket bath. The stop bath is then prepared. It immediately stops the action of the developer. The procedure is simple. The required amount of concentrate is mixed with water at about 20 degrees Celsius. This stop bath solution can then be used immediately. Preparation of the fixer bath is just as simple. It is prepared in the same manner as the stop bath. The only difference is the amount of concentrate required. The image must be fixed, otherwise any further exposure to light will cause further blackening of the negative. The fixing bath, which is slightly acidic, dissolves the remaining silver halide and stabilizes the silver atoms. The fixer usually consists of sodium thiosulfate or ammonium thiosulfate. Sodium thiosulfate reacts with the remaining silver halide to form a complex of silver and thiosulfate with the corresponding sodium halide. The resulting compounds are water-soluble and can be easily washed out, but more on this later. Once the temperature of all three solutions is checked again and found to be at 20 degrees Celsius, film processing can begin. The Jobo Uni tank used requires 485 milliliters of chemical liquid, developer, then stop bath and finally fixer. The developing tank is tilted continuously for the first 30 seconds and then every 3 seconds. The developer is now measured out and poured in, tilted continuously for 30 seconds and then once every 3 seconds. I have been using this developing technique for 40 years. The stop bath is measured during the development time. Do not exceed the specified development time. At the end of the development time, 12 minutes for Ilford HP3 and Kodak D76, the developer is poured back into the bottle and the stop bath is added directly. Development is stopped immediately. Stop bath must not get into the container with the film developer, as this will render it unusable. Developer should generally be stored away from light and at room temperature. The number of films that can be processed from a batch is indicated on the developer's data sheet. The stop bath has a short exposure time of 10 seconds, but it is not a problem to exceed this time. You can now measure out the fixer while the stop bath is in the developer tank. I only prepared 500 milliliters of fixer, so there is no need to measure it out. The stop bath is also returned to the bottle. It usually has an indicator that changes color to show when it is used up, such as yellow to red. Then pour the measured amount of fixer into the developing tank. The fixing time is also listed on the outer packaging of the fixer. It is usually a few minutes, I always use the longest time indicated. 
You do not need to keep to the 3 second tilt rhythm when fixing. Keep moving the developing can for the first 30 seconds so that the liquid is well distributed and the chemical reaction takes place effectively, according to Sinner's Circle. Sinner's Circle describes the interaction of the four parameters. Temperature, time, chemistry and mechanics. The film must then be rinsed thoroughly to prevent chemical residues from destroying the film over time. Use water that is approximately the same temperature as the water used for the three processing steps, developing, stopping, and fixing. First, rinse the film processor several times. Then run fresh water for 10 minutes and pour out all the water from the processing tank every minute. Jobo offers the Jobo Cascade for time and water saving rinsing. I use this most of the time, but I wanted to show you the alternative rinsing system in this video. Once watering is complete, the development tank is filled with water again. A wetting and drying agent is then added. Depending on the product used, the wetting agent has the following functions. Faster drying, prevention of drying stains, prevention of fungal or bacterial infestation and anti-static properties. The required amount of wetting agent is measured out and added to the water. The developing tank is moved slightly and after about a minute the film can be removed from the spool. Now the film is hung up with the two film clips and the wetting agent is wiped off. I have been doing this with my fingers for 40 years, but you can also use a special film wiper. Was it worth the effort? My first look at the developed film makes my heart sing. The film, which has been stored for 54 years since 1969, that is in 2023, has actually done what it was made for. It has provided negatives. Wow, fantastic, just great. After the film dried, I immediately started scanning the black and white negatives. For scanning I use the Epson V850 with Silver Fast software. A quick note. For 35mm film, I recommend checking out the Silversat's 35 homepage. They offer incredible scanning quality and a resolution of 14K scan which is about 120 megapixels. I also made a video about this, you can find it on my channel and linked here in the video. The result left me speechless, I never expected that the film would still deliver such fantastic quality after all these decades. Thank you very much for your interest and time, I hope you enjoyed the journey of this Ilford HP3 from loading it into the camera to developing the film to scanning it. Now I hope you enjoy looking at the pictures. Until the next video, stay healthy.